it's a big flaw of democracy where the idiots vote and the intelligent persons vote are equal i'm of the opinion that only people with children and some ownership of land should be allowed to vote but they would say i'm too radical mm was th- you study a lot of history was that ever a thing that was a thing for the longest time actually in fact india is one of the oldest civilizations to have had republics they were called janapadas and mm-hmm. wait let, let me remember what they were called ganasanghas they were called ganasanghas and they had voting and the male member of the society had a vote obviously and even in rome and all these places where they had voting typically men had a vote you needed to own land to have a vote and when you give votes to everybody you give votes to a bunch of morons and they vote for free things so they will vote for free water free electricity they don't want to pay for anything and you end up essentially with a bunch of demagogue politicians who just promise people free stuff you know free loans free money free this free that free food mm-hmm. give us votes and your country just goes down the shitter it's a flaw of democracy it only lasts until people realize they can vote for free things right are you not seeing that in your own country Yeah, and you could see it on a small scale too. Did you, did you guys ever have class presidents? No. You guys never had okay, well, class presidents uh, were these presidents that we had that would speak for the students to the faculty, and typically two to three kids would run. The kid that had the best ideas, that was the most reasonable, you would think that they would win. But there was another kid who understood the game. It's like if I am class president, free pizzas every Friday. a free recess every day uh, free this free that and that kid ended up winning but he didn't do anything uh, because his ideas weren't realistic but a lot of the kids got sold that dream ah interesting yeah so people are flawed and democracy has this issue the thing is all systems have some or the other issue and there's no real perfect system because everything gets gamed if you have an aristocracy then the aristocracy gets too much power they start bullying the random people mm-hmm. and they become evil if you have a dictator the dictator has too much power he declares world war 2 kills all the jews and things like that so no system is perfect i don't really know what the best system is but having some kind of statesman to lead you is a good thing like Lee Kuan Yew is a good type of leader to have Narendra Modi I think so too I think is a good type of leader to have Putin I think so I'm not sure Biden seems like he's not all there I don't know but never met that guy so can't comment but seems like he's not he's not he's mentally, mentally sharp there. yeah yeah you, you could yeah. say it man the, the the thing is with Team a lot of these le- <laughs> well he's really old as well but he's been like this for some time um my problem is when there's a career politician hold on how old is joe biden 80 years old where, is he 80 okay 80. <laughs> where when you're a career politician you see life in a 2d way versus a 3d way because you're predominantly thinking in terms of uh, exposure for yourself and passing the law that you created i believe in order to be a leader you need some skin in the game uh, there should be a certain period where you're building some sort of company you have a leadership position in some place uh, maybe you have kids that are successful whatever but you need to have a certain level of skin in the game to even run for a certain political position you shouldn't be a lifelong politician by any means i agree with you there but it's no people vote for these people so because they have charm not just charm i think that and connections as well 
I think a large part of winning an election is actually getting to the getting the party approval and actually getting a ticket to run the election. It's and that lo- mm-hmm. you can only run an election if you have the money and the connections to run in the election. And for that, you kind of need to be from a pol- political party or a political family or something. Before the political parties or families especially mattered a lot where if Jeff Bush uh, for the 2016 election wasn't running in 2016 but let's say he was running three elections before he most likely beats Trump but the fact that it was happening in 2016 now uh, even though he comes from the Bush family it doesn't hold that much weight because nowadays you have social media and you could do a lot of your marketing on social media if it was three elections ago you're predominantly marketing yourself on uh, CNN MSNBC Fox and chances are the bush family already has connections with these media organizations where in 2016 you don't need those organizations that much heck if they're talking bad about you that's even good uh, because now others are thinking oh wait the mainstream media is talking bad about this person Let's, something good must be going something, on <laughs> yeah, something good must be about this person so the era also plays a big role i definitely agree with you there I same with clinton big... same with clinton if clinton was running three elections ago she's not losing to trump uh, she would she would be guaranteed to win but she had to face sure. barack obama for sure. yeah mm-hmm. for sure i think the whole trump thing is worse of personality and the whole comical nature of how he you know dealt with people mm-hmm. really helped him out where he would he would connect with people much more than the other person clinton yeah that's why she lost to barack obama because one of her criticisms was that she seemed too rehearsed where barack he could go with the punches a little bit more where there was this flaw that he had uh, i don't know if you recall but once he became president he used to say ah oh, a lot did you know about that mm-hmm. i have noticed that yes So he used to say it a lot and David Letterman used to make fun of him. He'd get a s- small snippet of Barack Obama saying filler words and he'd count them, right? He would think that this would hurt Barack Obama's reputation, but it actually enhanced it because some people were seeing glimpses of, "Oh, whoa, this is a real person." He's like me. He's like me. He, even George Bush had certain glimpses of that. People hated George Bush, but every now and then he'd have a thing called Bushisms. He'll say certain things where Uh, this was before you could go viral but people would be thinking that was pretty funny <laughs> he seems just like a regular guy answer me this arman how did this retard defeat donald trump i mean i don't like donald trump but not of not i don't care about american politics but this guy you have right now he literally seems like he's not there like mentally not there How did he beat Donald Trump? The system, man. I mean, th- there's talks with the stolen election. The other part is that he was Barack Obama's vice president. So anyone that wants that level of predictability where they know that this guy is going to have that bureaucratic nature in regards to him, they know that they're getting that with Biden because Biden is not sitting down thinking of his own ideas or whatever. He's uh he's He's saying the talking thinking, point. he can't think. Right, he's getting the talking <laughs> points of the, the powerful and just putting words into that. Uh so there's definitely a marketplace for Biden folks that, that just want predictability, that, that don't want uh, a president that's going to be tweeting and stuff. That's where you're going to get Biden voters. Do you think there should be an age limit to have a politician? I saw a video of Biden like when he was younger and that guy comes off as like a really sharp very intelligent person very astute like i saw a video of him like giving a speech on you know drugs and he's like anyone carrying drugs more than the size of this coin i'm going to find them and that guy seemed m- much more intelligent than the person that you have today but the guy today i doubt he can form coherent sentences without reading Yeah. I mean, he's a lot older and he, I'm pretty it's been like this for some time. He was supposed to run in 2016. That's when he was sharper, but he didn't run then. And now, I mean, he was the best candidate on the Democratic side 
where there's Ber- Bernie Sanders as well. But Bernie Sanders is a little too too radical as well. Uh, he's not. Isn't the he the one who likes communism? Is that, isn't that the guy? I saw an interview with him. Socialism. Socialism. Okay, same thing. Yeah, I mean, communism with extra steps. He he's also uh, one of those lifelong politicians. Uh, here's the thing, man. If you are that invested in who the president is uh, and such, chances are there's certain things that you're doing wrong in your life. You should be building your life in a way where you remember, oh, oh, this is guy is the president. I'll oh, go whatever. But if your whole life centers around that, the chances are you fell for the mainstream media's game where they consistently need people interested in their latest headlines, stories, or whatever. And if you're constantly staying updated with this stuff, chances are you're not building anything in your own life. Uh, who the president is should not be having that much of an effect on you. For sure, for sure. I think Some for guys, the masses, I mean, these though, guys, they, yeah. it's all they have, you know, it's all they have. <laughs> What do you mean it's all they have in terms of talking points? Or do you think it plays a big role in their life? In terms of giving themselves the feeling of power, the feeling that they have control over their own life. Because for most people, they work some kind of job. They have to pay rent. And the only time they feel actually powerful is when they talk about politics because they feel like they have some control over something. And certain times these people do play a role where one of my friends, he was about to get fired from his job recently because he was the only guy that wasn't taking the vaccine. And apparently Biden was the guy who passed a law for you to take the vaccine. So in that situation, the president does play a role in your day-to-day activities. I could see situations for that. But if you're one of these guys that's consistently getting obsessed with who the president is, what their latest scandal is, you're a loser to me. Man, I wish India was like that in a, in a in a way because in India, we had the opposite thing. We had one political party kind of in all practical aspects make it mandatory for you to take the vaccine. And the other political party wasn't like, no, 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 this is like bad for democracy. We, we should have freedom and things like that. The other political party was like, the rules are not harsh enough. You guys are being mm. too lenient. You're not effective enough. What kind of cock side you people? <laughs> so both side, both groups are taking one side. Both groups are taking one side, <laughs> and the, the, the one that's not in power is saying, "You're not fucking people hard enough. What are you doing? You guys are not effective. Look, they're not as effective in fucking you." <laughs> Did any of your friends get fired? No one got fired. Most people got vaccinated. Hmm. Were you I'm one of the few people I know of who didn't get the vaccine. Were you uninvited from weddings for not getting it? Not for exactly coming? uninvited. I just didn't go because it was too much of a hassle to travel without the vaccine. Mm, like I you see. had to get tested and then within three days you can fly. And then while returning, you also have to get tested. And if you end up testing positive, you have to spend two weeks at a hospital. Like, ah, fuck that shit. I'm not going. Mm-hmm. Bye. Sorry, cuz. I can't come. I'm not vaccinated. And they're <laughs> like, oh, we understand. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I ended up missing a couple of weddings that I would rather have gone to because of this whole nonsense. But We've talked about it before where people get offended if you don't invite them. Do they get offended if you don't go? Did you they get offended if you don't come? I recently went to a wedding with my family and we were not going to go, but my father and my mother, they got a threat. Like, if you don't come to our wedding, we're not going to come to yours. Ooh. Like, if you don't come to our son's wedding, we won't come to your son's wedding. So we had to go. We had to fly and go. Hmm. I mean, does the threat hold any merit? Does it matter it if does, they come or it not? Does, it does. It holds merit. It matters. Gotcha. This is a family that you're close to? Yes. Close family. The thing is that they're getting married in the middle of like a work month and everybody has to like get, leave their work for a couple of days and go there, then come back, shop. It's a, it takes like at least eight to 10 days for your entire family. And 
we did not intend on going for a long period but then we ended up having to because of the threat 